Hello everyone, welcome to Inside Witness episode 2. Dave says this is the big one, so let's we'll tag so. it as that one. Let's hope uh, so. We'll get to know Dave Roll a bit more on what he does at the club. If you've not seen episode 1 with Chief Executive Phil Finney, that's available on the club website and on the YouTube channel and everywhere else. I'm sure the media team will point in the right direction. They're also going to be this side of the camera in the coming weeks. Got a few of these lined up, so we'll keep an eye out for them. Dave, obviously, um, your role at the club is all things commercial, so can you just tell us a little bit more about the budget that, that you've got to get together and what you're accountable for on a commercial level? Yeah, certainly. First and foremost, welcome to the home of Rugby League, James. <laughs> it's nice to see, see you down here. Thanks very much for doing these interviews with us. Uh, Commercial-wise, what, what does it entail, commercial? Obviously, you've got your, your kit sponsorships, which is, plays a big part, your training range sponsorships, player and staff sponsorships, all advertising, that's traditional advertising at the stadium, pitch side, and of course the, a lot of new early where we, we're making a lot of good inroads in is with the thank, with the support of our media team, Sean and Sam are doing a brilliant job with our digital side, uh, so we, we're making big inroads there. Then you've got your match sponsorships and your match day hospitality, and then probably a couple of events, certainly there'll be a golf there. Uh, so that all falls on my shoulders. I wonder who came up with the idea for a golf day, Dave. Was that you? It was me many yeah. years ago, <laughs> many years ago, about eight years ago. And ironically, uh, a, a guy who used to help the club out uh, in media, Frank Tobin Jr., uh, a very good friend of mine. He, we, we named it. He was a, two big passions Frank had in his life were golf and witness rugby league. Uh, so we named it the. The golf day is named after him, so it's the Frank Toby Junior Memorial Golf Day. Really? Uh, so it's got a link there. So obviously, at the moment, you've you've got the kit box stuff and the training wear and stuff like that. So what are your focuses at the moment in terms of what you're trying to shift sponsorship wise? What can the people watching ring you up and and get off you at the moment? Well, at, the, at this moment in time, we all that all we've got staff sponsorship available. My main area of focus at the moment is match, match day packages, sponsoring the game. We've got four, four different packages at different levels. Start, so you can actually sponsor one of the games for as little as £500, uh, and that goes right up to £1,500. So we've got a man of the match sponsorship package, a match ball, an executive match, and a big match sponsor. Uh, all real good packages in a fantastic facility, which this stadium is. And I think one of the things about winning championship last year was it, it highlighted how good a facility this is. Sometimes you become a bit blase, don't you, which it, um, it's easy to do. But this is a good facility, and I like to think we, we, we make a, a good effort, we put a good a good match day experience on for our corporate guests. The, how important is everything that you do in terms of the, the commercial side? Someone said to me it's about 15% of the total budget. Is that about, yeah. is that about yeah, right? Uh, yeah, it, it is. And obviously the budget set, and as Phil said, uh, last week in his interview, it, that budget that's been submitted, that depending on that certain amount of that is how you get your salary cap. Uh, however, that is fluid. So if we've got a figure in the budget for our commercial income and we can manage to exceed that, which we, you know, we're going to do everything we possibly can to exceed that, that therefore then lifts the, the cap for the, the spend on players. So that's where, that's one of the challenges and that's one of the things that excites me because at the end of the day I'm, I'm no different than anyone else sat in there, I'm a fan of the club. Uh, so hopefully the more money we can get in commercially, the more it'll help Tim to build a stronger team for the championship season ahead. And, and part of that is is retaining sponsors. Obviously, you know, all clubs go through having multiple sponsors and yeah. year in, year out, and obviously you've been down here, you know, quite a while now. How important is it <clears throat> certainly in this after what's happened in the past, how important is it to try and retain the sponsors you've got? How much easier does that make your job? Oh, well, I think anyone that works in sales knows that it's far easier to retain a partner than it is to bring a, a new one in. So, and, and, and in fairness to, to the new board of directors and Phil himself, uh, they've, they're have backing me with 100% support on the one, a main, one of the main areas of my, my focus this, this season is going to be building them relationships up with the people who back the club for 2020 in a view to then giving them such a positive experience that we'll hopefully return them for 2021 and beyond. Because ultimately it means that you don't have to start with a blank canvas from your point of view. Yeah, if, yeah. if you, lo oh, if you yeah. lose everyone, you, you've got a blank yeah. canvas, haven't you? And it's difficult. Well, it's where, where we got, where you got a bit of that uh, last season was you coming out of Super League and a lot of businesses, not a lot, but a number of businesses, the bigger companies, 
that their main area where they see a return on their investment is by the TV, the TV exposure. Yeah. So obviously, with a lot less TV exposure, it doesn't become as a, you know as exciting for them to get involved. So you you got to accept that that's a that's a fact of the game, but. You, you've got to look for other angles and other opportunities whereby you can engage with a different type of company, probably more local company, and get them to, to invest in the club, which we've been successful in doing. I'm really proud that not just me, the whole club has, has created an environment and a buzz around the place, which I think you know has been sadly missing uh, for, for quite a while. But that, that excitement and that feel around the club, I think, has played a huge part in us being able to, to sell all the, the training range and all the kit sponsorship for 2020. Yeah, I mean, you can see, obviously, logos behind us, you know, companies that are familiar to people from around town and yeah. uh, from the local area. What what can you do in terms of that retention? What, what do you think it takes to be able to, you know, re- what are you doing as an example to well, retain? OK, well... Well, obviously, you, your first starting point is what you, the contracts that you you agree and the terms and conditions you agree. You have to deliver them. That's you know, that's a, a prerequisite. But making sure they get delivered in the in the right way, getting to know the people, I find is, is a huge part, and, and more importantly, them getting to know me. Uh, Seen some pictures floating around of you on social media doing that very there's, same. There's, there's the odd one gets put out. <laughs> there's the odd one gets put out, but it it is it's no more no less than that, you know, and but. On top of that, then, you know, we insisted and it was led by Chris Price. He, he wanted to do something because him, he himself has been a, yeah. probably my longest serving sponsor. So he understands the, what it's like to be on that side of the fence. And it was Chris's idea that when to show the kit to the, the companies that have been, they invested on it for this year, we took him up to the Barton Rouge and I think the lads had put a video out last week. And, and we had, it was a great evening, a real good evening. And, and the object of that evening for me, from my perspective, when I said it to Chris, is I want all them people to, to get to know us a little bit better that night. And, and Tim Sheens as well, they all enjoyed a chat with Tim. Uh, but I want them to, to go out there with a good feeling about that I've done the right thing and I want to, I want to be part of this journey. And it, that was like the starting point for me. And then we're going to, we, hopefully we're going to build on that to a number of, number of opportunities we're going to create where the, the kit partners are going to have like exclusive access to, um, they're going to get opportunities to, to get to know the journey that the club's on at this moment in time. The next one we've got lined up is a week on Saturday, the, all the player sponsors and the kit sponsors and the training range sponsors are all invited down with, with a guest or two down to an open training session with the, the Tim's going to lead and we're going to have a, a coffee and a, and a bite to eat. Watch the open training session, Get have a chat with Tim, have a chat with the players. Uh, and then actually get to see the lads yeah. starting in working out in pre-season on the Saturday morning. Brilliant. I mean, you had the, the sponsors evening for the kit launch on the Monday night and then you had a kit launch for the fans uh, for early bird season ticket purchases yeah. on the Tuesday. It was the first time really that the club's done that for, for quite a while. What what was the reasoning behind that? Well, like we, like we, well the, there was many reasons. A, it's the right thing to do. Uh, but, but one of the things... It's, Great vehicles for engagement. Great be being with people, spending time with people face to face. The Monday night was brilliant for the sponsors. They, I hope they and I've, uh, the feedback we've had, they got a lot of out. They all enjoyed the evening. Tuesday night, it was the fans' turn then, and there was genuine magic in that room on the Tuesday night. You know, we we involved some of the young fans who were part of the the displaying the new kits, which was brilliant. Members of the women's team, the LDRL team the academy team, the scholarship team, and then obviously Shane coming back home. He, he was like the, the last man on stage. And we've uh, I've got some figures here. The, the media guys have put these together for me. The video that they did, which obviously you can still watch, from the Monday to Friday, it reached more than 200,000 people. It had more just under 50,000 engagements um, and 26,745 video views. That was just Monday to Friday in the week. That was across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I mean... How how big is that for you in terms of being able to go to sponsors and say, you know, look what you can get? Oh, it's get. critical, critical. Uh, one one of the things we did with them with them statistics, Sean uh, Sean Hayes, one of our media lads, he turned that into an, an infographic uh, that we shared with all the sponsors. And ironically, uh, it was a great piece of work, and I know how because I'm the one that's at the front of, I'm the one sat across the desk. Them figures are vital, you know, being able to. Uh, 
display actually how big the, the social media performance has been across any particular thing, event that you've done is critical and that's what people, they, they latch on to them for they like to see them figures. Uh, brilliant, brilliant piece of work and ironically yesterday I called in to see uh, one of the people who was on, is on the kit this year, Joanne Hanley down at Elite Employment Group and she was blown away by it really that that what what it was so powerful about it she's actually looked at the infographic sean sean had produced evidencing all them figures from the identity video that we've done for the kit launch and it had like opened her mind as how else how else could she utilize her association her partnership with with witness vikings to to get help activate and grow her business yeah so you know, for that that alone, that was just one one example. Where didn't particularly go into talk about it, but that's what she we ended up discussing how really how engaged she was by that. So I, I did say at the time to Sean, it was a great piece of work. So well done, Sean. How does it work with the board of directors in terms of what you've got to sell, and you know if you've got a deal with someone and maybe someone's haggling with you and whatever on the price? How does it? How does that relationship work with the board? There's always a deal to be done, James. You know, that was always a deal to be done. Uh, well, obviously, with the new board of directors, they're not involved in the club on a day-to-day -day basis. But what, what has happened, uh, with, they've each been picked up an area of sort of their expertise, and, the, and then they're looking at that area and they're supporting that area. And in the commercial, it, it's Tracy Glendinning. Uh, so, although Phil's obviously the, the person who, who I'd go to, Tra Tracy's been really helpful in... She, she's looking at earlier, she's, she's like tidying up the processes of, of how we administer uh, commercial and, and that's been really helpful and it's made us like a cleaner, smarter operation how we how we get the, the money in. How do you work it in terms of making sure there's no crossover between you and, and Tracy for instance? Well obviously my, my area of, of focus is, is far more local. Uh, Tracy's looking at from a, a bigger picture viewpoint, where she's she's looking at how strategically we, we could grow the commercial revenue, not just this year but in, in years to come. And and she's also she's looking at businesses further afield than than, than witness, and trying to engage with them. So that that's 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 her, her main area of focus. What what do you what so just explain to us what's the process that you go on in terms of. You know, we talked about retention, but you, you, like any business, you've got to grow them revenues. You know, if you come in and you've got nothing in your pipeline or whatever, what, yeah. what's the process you have to go through? How do you identify potential sponsors and, and how do you go after them? Well, one, one of the things is, it's, it's vitally important that you look after what you've already got. Because that in turn, they are, they're also a salesman for you, you know, because people all know that you, that person invested when they're talking to business colleagues, you know, they're giving a positive impression of, that have been involved at Witness Vikings. There's many, there are many other, it's vital that you have opportunities where a business, because if, if you set a new business up, and the, the most important thing you want to do is try to grow it, and you look for the most cost-effective way of how you can use use a, a marketing budget to grow that business, and in turn grow your revenue and grow your profit, etc. That's just, you know, that's common business sense, isn't it? So I think it's always important that the club has opportunities for new businesses that are maybe starting up or new to the area that are, that we can give a real good uh, value <coughs> commodity to them for them to get an opportunity to work with the club and at this moment th this season one of the things that we put a lot of focus on is our rewards partners you know you can become a rewards partner where you you have an opportunity to to give a discount to our our members our growing members which is another brilliant story uh, for as little as two hundred and fifty pounds, you know, obviously plus the the VAT, that's something like an entry point, mm. uh, and it's also an opportunity where you, it's not just a direct spend. It you, you, it makes business sense to do it. You know, you're going to be spending money to to advertise your business and to raise awareness and to focus target groups. Well, there's an opportunity, direct opportunity, where you become a rewards partner. Uh, for as little as that, and that's for twelve months. And you, where you're, you're on you're on the club's website, as you'll see through our social media channels, we we, we raise in awareness and, and work the lads are working to try to drive our our members and etc. into these businesses. I've seen a few stickers floating around. I think with this reward, there's a reward pack yeah, of so stickers every, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So I'm everyone, not, I, won't, I won't give away where I eat, but I've seen yeah. one certainly <laughs> a very popular. Uh, 
food place. The lads are nodding in agreement behind, so... Oh, well, in particular, <laughs> Sam White, as you can see, he's, he often frequents that one. Uh, but, yeah, it, that's one of, the, one of the things, is that there's, there's brand awareness that, yeah. that that business is... A, no, like I say, the amount of people that will go through the health food shops drive through. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the amount of people who will see the Witness Vikings logo there, you know, is, is a brilliant Absolutely. sort of opportunity. Yeah. And in, fer and in fairness, I've, I've got to pay credit to Chris Price for that. He was, you know, Chris has been, uh, the, Chris Price, obviously the chairman of the board now. And he, he's been a great help, you know, in, in commercial, because there's only so, you know, by and large, I do it on my own. There's only so many hours in the day, and Chris has, you know, he's picked the ball up with a couple of things, and, and that reward scheme, you know, he, he deserves a huge amount of credit for that, and he, he's gone out and sourced quite a number of them partners. But... That, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about yeah. the teamwork. So tell us a bit more about how it all comes together then. Obviously, it's not just you as a one-man band. You're getting help from, like say, you mentioned Chris. Yeah, the, the, there's, a, the, there's, a number, there's a number of people that, you know, are, are opportunities that help to drive the commercial revenue. And in no particular order, obviously, Chris has been gone out of his way to, to, to help support me in, on a number of things. The media lads, Sam and Sean, are integral to it because there's a lot of value placed on the, the quality work they do, and they do do quality work, and I think if you, you look at what they do compared to people, not just in our league, but in, in yeah. Super League, we've, we more than punch well above our weight, so big shout out to them lads. We, did, we did just signed off a partnership with, with a, an agency, a, like a commercial agency, that's going to be working a couple of days of the month, and that's a chap called Dave Broadbent, from a business called 2811, sporting agency so he's going to be coming on board to help incre increase revenue and, and more than anything one, I've always been a big believer that the fans have a huge part to play in it a huge part to play in everything in the club they, that's the heartbeat of the club that's where it starts but it, it, it works in commercial as well because the, the energy and the positivity that the fans create around match day around any events around just being a, a supporter of this great club of ours they, 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 it's crucial because that's what draws businesses in. You know, that's that positivity is what what people see. I want to be associated with that brand. Yeah. So I can long may continue, and it's lovely to see we're in a position where you know the season tickets have gone up for the first time in quite a number of years, and that that that's great credit and, and exciting times ahead. But the the, the heartbeats and we're, we're never underestimate the positivity of the fans and the fans been engaged by the club. Is, is crucial to commercial growth. Dave, thanks very much for, Pleasure, uh, mate. Good for to the see interview. You. Thanks um, for telling us some of your stories and also about the club. Don't forget, if you want to sponsor the club, pitch side boards, match sponsorship, it's all there. Dave's your man. <laughs> Ring the number. Um, I'm sure he'll sort you out a good deal. Uh, please check back next week because there'll be another uh, Inside Witness uh, podcast or video. Uh, please do check out the one with Phil Finney from last week as well and we'll see you very soon. Put it there, James. Good to see you, mate. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.